dann wird es besonders wieder, okay? Let's see. Oh, If it goes. Are we live? Maybe we are. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, we had we had some struggles with the connection and internet here. As always, we are in the marina here, and the Wi-Fi is like not the best. So it should work. I see we have a few guys already here. Oh, Picard and Sebastian, welcome. How are you guys? Is this, can you hear us? This is first 30 seconds on the sheet. Yeah, it's okay. You are live. We are live. Woo. It works. It, it is a bit of a lag because we have on, on, on one screen the streaming software, not on the other the stream, but... Let's see. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Great to have you all here. Um, it was some crazy two weeks. Um, we have had yeah our first experiences here in this hurricane world, which was totally yeah strange for us. Um, yeah. It was yeah we far away for us. This is not uh, what we're used to, and uh, so uh, but it was great. We learned so much. Um, we had also unfortunately our first small boat injury and yeah. uh, but in whole um, it was a great uh, great time and so yeah I think we should maybe wrap up starting with the hurricanes and uh, yes and the uh, um, location we are in so basically now after two years of sailing in a Met the Caribbean is a bit different for us um, it is always warm here the weather is always really nice and there is a chance of hurricane which we don't had in the Met. So now we're here since December mm -hmm. and went between Martinique to Guadeloupe to Dominica and then in May June the, the hurricane season starts. So basically more winds, more squalls, uh, more rain during this season and yeah more risk for for us when we are living on the boat so we have to really take care um where we are anchored check the weather more frequently and yeah protect us and the boat yeah it was especially um with the first of june kind of which is the day that kicks off hurricane season here in the in the caribbean um it was just more you could feel every sailor you were meeting uh, along the way that it was just the mood shifted it was not so easy anymore and whoever you met <laughs> was always you know it was talking about the hurricanes it was talking about you no know, checking the weather forecast at least twice a day and uh, so yeah that has been really interesting and we did start also to check the weather forecast every two day, uh, uh, twice a day and it was actually quite uh, a shock or an interesting feeling as we had those first tropical waves popping up. Um, what was for us strange is that we did not even really know how this whole hurricane thingy started or, or evolves. Because in general when we came to the Caribbean everybody said no worries you will know at least five days before that a hurricane will come. And you have time to prepare <laughs> or to, to hide prepare. or to go somewhere else. Exactly. So, but five days for us meant we know today that in five days a hurricane will be here, which is not really the case. It's kind of true probably for Florida and <laughs> it's, <so laughs> it's really hot here. Hot here. <laughs> There's no wind. It's 33, 34 degrees yeah. and it's like we're dying. So the five day forecast kind of is true for Florida because it takes a lot, you know, for the wind to go up. But in the Caribbean, it's just, I would say, more two days. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, and you don't know like how they are forming and uh, where are they going. So the forecast tells you approximately when it will hit land, where it might hit land, and with what speeds uh, of wind. And uh, that, that is actually quite awesome how precise they are. But you never know then where they are really going uh, before they hit the Caribbean. So normally it should all be on the northern arc of, of the Caribbean islands and then go north. Um, and in the south you should be protected and that's why like most of the sailors are sailing south to uh, St. Vincent and uh, Grenada to be safe but uh, this time uh, the, the, or this year or the last years the, the weather seasons are quite different like we've seen it already on our crossing we had um, way less wind than forecast we had no squalls it was very calm and normally during our season um, there should be more wind and more squalls and also with the, the forecasts now, um, they were not really sure um, if it's going south or north and the, those type of hurricanes should occur later, like in August and not already in, in May or June. Yeah, the kind of fun fact of this whole thing is that we should have already been in St. Vincent by that time. Uh, we were kind of a little bit lazy in the move because of the batteries and the usual COVID rules which kind of made us stuck uh, longer in Dominica, which in the end was pretty much lucky for us yeah. because the hurricane was a lot uh, yeah, more south more south than, uh, than you would expect in those months. But what we learned and uh, what is really interesting is that when you start looking at these weather forecasts is that you have to learn the expressions of a hurricane. So um, normally what happens during this whole hurricane time is that you have like a tropical wave that forms, you know, in front of um, of Africa. So you have this kind of really hot air, uh, really high temper, high sea temperatures, which kind of go and uh, create a lot of uh, yeah mm, steam, and that steam then kind of goes and evolves into clouds. And if you have the winds, which you normally have there, it kind of has the possibility to start spinning um, and this is kind of by the time the hurricane hit we already had experience I would say about 10 of those waves so whenever one of those waves starts this is kind of from that point on you have five days until it is in the Caribbean um, it normally takes that it depends obviously on the speed but normally that it's the kind of rough schedule but at this time you have no idea if it's going to be a hurricane or not it does not have to be a hurricane like out of the tents we had luckily only one at that point kind of transformed because what needs to happen uh, here is that there must be a lot of steam afterwards so the hotter obviously the sea go goes with the time the more of clouds they are forming and the more these kind of pack together the more wind is pulled in because the moment this there is a the steam kind of rises there's kind of a vacuum that forms below and there kind of the cold wind gets sucked in and that is kind of this yeah cycle that has starts to happening and if this grows stronger and stronger it can evolve in a tropical depression and that's so sounds something i never really heard before you know what does this what, what is this and this is kind of when the first wind starts to grow. So it is a tropical depression as long as the winds are below 32 knots, which for us is okay. So it's tropical depression, like, us, we can live with yeah. that. <laughs> 32 knots is fine. And I think, so the hurricane came on Friday and on Monday it was clear that it was going to be a tropical depression. And then it stayed a tropical depression until Thursday. So what happened on Thursday? It goes on, there is more wind, it kind of starts to slowly um, yeah, evolve more. And then it becomes a tropical storm. So it's still not a hurricane, it's a tropical storm. And the tropical storm is between 30 knots and 63 knots. So in that kind of range, you do not have a hurricane yet, it's a tropical storm. And this is what happened on Thursday. On Thursday there was the news, you know, okay, it is a tropical storm. And there we kind of slowly, you know, realized yeah. to, okay, we, we need to fix stuff. We started to prepare the boat because, you know, 40, 50 knots of wind can slowly be, yeah, can 
affect not the comfortable. <laughs> yeah. we, we had like 40, 45 knots at anchor in, in Greece, so that was like pretty standard. And yeah, here the, the point is that you never know how it evolves. So we had to prepare a lot on the boat and fix everything, take everything that is not 100% bolted or fixed to the boat down um, and put up um, yeah, protection for the Biminis, take down the solars. Yeah, I think we have like a video here where you see all the where we show what we actually yeah. did. So where we kind of strapped down the solar panels, we went on and took down the Bimini and whatever there was kind of we tried to uh, to fix and uh, yeah, not have anything flying around. And uh, yeah, we would hope it stopped there, but unfortunately then when we woke up the next day, it was officially a hurricane. So that's kind of when you have more than 63 knots of wind. But luckily it was not coming our way. Luckily, yeah, that, that was still the good news. It would be still fo like a lot more south than us. And we the, the strongest that should have hit us were 50 knots of wind. Yeah, um, yeah I, th I think this was for us, or at least it was really important to understand how this all can form because you can kind of start preparing yourself better. Uh, once it was a hurricane, it's still not, you know, life-threatening or anything. You have, again, five kind of categories of hurricanes until it gets really rough. Uh, well, until it gets really bad. It's already rough once it's a hurricane. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of how we, we experienced this first, this first week. Uh, for me, it was really important to understand how it worked. Uh, we function a little bit different there. <laughs> uh, Michael was totally chilled and had no, um, yeah, no hard feelings at all. So for me, it was uh, pretty intense. Uh, I did not, yeah. Oh. You you behaved <laughs> very well. You were yeah. very very brave. <laughs> now we we were prepared. We know how it's gonna hit when approximately, and uh, there were not so many boats around us, which was also good because the more. Uh, people boats and stuff there is around the more uh, risk of stuff flying at you and we were diving at the anchor we were making sure that everything is properly fixed we let we let down more chain like we had down probably 60 70 meters of chain then and uh, felt pretty safe in in the end we got 45 uh, knots max that that hit us so nothing really out of the ordinary and we but we are not really sure if our wind uh, meter is, is working properly because... The, the neighbors had 55. Yeah, so, neighbors um. had 55. So, <laughs> yeah, but you could already see that there were a few boats in the um, anchorage that did not prepare anything and solar panels were flying away, yeah. B-minis were lifting up and it was a bit scary, yeah. I think for us the biggest question, because in front of us there was uh, a huge amount of voice actually which we could have taken. So um, we actually took a lot of yeah, time to decide if we wanted yeah. to stay at anchor and boy. I think this is in general um, the, the main question at least we had for us because we don't want the boat to move. Like the, the two bad things is fly, stuff flying around and obviously Dragging. the boat not holding where it should yeah. be. Um, we stay at anchor. We trust our anchor, maybe yes. you can explain. I trust the anchor more. Like we did a lot of research on boys and if you don't, like I did not make the boy, but I lived with the anchor and our chain now for two and a half years. And we know exactly how it works, what it can stand, how the sand and everything works together in order to be uh, properly safe. And with the boy, you never know how old is the rope, how properly well is it fixed. Um, yeah, is it already worn or yeah, did something occur and is not holding anymore? And we've also seen quite a few scary videos where um, boys are breaking loose and the whole boat is then drifting through the anchorage. And I think that's also the second problem. Like it's not only your own boat has to hold, yeah. but also all the boats around you. So obviously, when you're on a boy field, the distances between boats are a lot smaller than when you are out yeah. at anchor. Um, I remember like four hours before the storm was hitting, uh, they came again by, like the boy owner came by to we ask if you wanted a boy. A boy. Um, oh, and boats in front of us were dragging. Yeah. 
we had like uh, three boats coming in overnight in order to be protected because they were en route and they anchored in front of the boys uh, near the beach and they were dragging and, and uh, calling the, the guys and the boys please please help us but uh, luckily no one no one got hurt there and yeah so when they were kind of Go giving them the boys they also came up to us if we want to change but I think we were very happy to have been staying at Anchor and uh, yeah in general it was yeah. quite a yeah quite the, a good the wind experience. was always stable and, and not too high so we did not drag yeah. and managed perfectly like the, the first experience was positive but anyhow we left afterwards yes because <laughs> oh it was yeah, as I said, it was a good experience, we learned a lot, but it was still a scary one. And uh, kind of while we were sitting in there, there was already the news that a new tropical yeah. wave was forming. So we were like, okay, um, this, is, we're out. this is not where we want to stay. Um, we wanted to go to St. Lucia at least for, you know, a quick stop. Uh, but St. Lucia changed again the rules for, entry. for COVID and stuff, so it got just yeah. too tricky. and. Uh, we looked at the weather forecast, it looked amazing for four days, so we said this is this is our window to go and uh, yeah, to sail finally to Curacao. But I think before we move to the actual sail, are there still any other questions regarding hurricanes, sable preparation, which we probably have not talked in deep right now? Just leave some comments or give us a like. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Michael and Greta and we are here since two years sailing on Fortuna um, now in Curaçao which is actually the most one of the most safest places for hurricanes and yeah quite quite happy that we're here and we made it we we had a, a good crossing like we started straight from uh, Dominica and wanted to sail a bit south to Martinique anchor there get back into uh, yeah, sailing because we've been at anchor or at, yeah, at anchor in, in Dominica for three weeks because you're not allowed to sail around there, which was really sad. And then we decided just go for it. We sailed those uh, three and a half days um, towards um, mm -hmm. the west, but we could also see there that the weather was different because the the forecast was was good. We had calm winds and also after a hurricane everything calms down the sea calms down slowly and um, we had very good conditions from from sea state but it was way more squally like we, we actually had one of our quickest sales so far yeah. so this is kind of uh, the route we made uh, in total it was then more than 500 miles because obviously you never sail but you can never go totally straight but wind and waves kind of decide a little bit where you go. Um, most of it was downwind, almost too downwind. Yeah. So we always had to change between butterfly or not. Uh, this was a lot of playing around with the sails this time. But we averaged almost uh, six knots. So yeah. that is that is quite a lot for us. Uh, we had an amazing start with our Jenica. We literally sailed for 12 hours with our Jenica. That was probably the longest Without Jenner nothing. could say we ever yeah. had um, and it was just perfect as you can see the first two days were really nice almost no uh, yeah no nothing. waves no rolling no rain um, it was really an amazing and then then the weather changed um, like this literally, <laughs> then literally. It, yeah yeah it was it was rough because the point is when we go downwind with butterfly and we have two sails up one in uh, one direction and the other one uh, towards the other and the wind is like 15 knots okay. constantly okay. and the squall arrives and you don't uh, yeah, see it or expect it because it's, it's night for example um, it hits you with 30 or 40 knots very quickly and the only lucky thing was that we were able to track them a bit on um, our radar so we could see where they are and how fast they are moving you can see here that we were tracking two for example and they were moving quite fast like up to 60 knots and we found that like if they move with 60 knots um, the whole uh, weather 
um, front like clouds, rain, thunder. Um, we experienced wind down at the, the sea level of half of it, like 60 knots. Squall speed is like 30 knots of, of winds. But still they come rough and they come from every direction. So once we had to take down and furl in the sails quickly and we were not fast enough really and then the wind took the sails from the wrong side and the boat yeah we got, we got turned around twice um i think the problem with squalls is, is that you we had experienced squalls before during our atlantic crossing um and maybe we were always too lucky in the sense that they rarely scratched us and we rarely had wind so maybe we became a little bit too relaxed with squalls we learned this time it's actually yeah as like as a sailor you have heard about squalls before but like in so many things until you don't experience it yourself um, yeah you don't really learn it uh, we definitely did learn it this time uh, we learned it also with uh, yeah <laughs> physical pain yeah um, yeah when Greta got slapped by uh, a Genoa sheet so basically 30 knots of wind into the Genoa sheet from the other side pulled the whole boat sheet slipped through poof, and hit Greta on, on the whole belly luckily only blue marks and no yeah uh, it's just no some damage. bruises so it's, and a bit it's of nothing uh, nothing all too bad what we learned is yeah to be prepared and we definitely need to change our Genoa lines because there if we use the pole they are too short to keep on the winch yeah and uh, yeah when you have 30 knots of wind um, I'm probably weak, not so strong as many other sailors, but I don't know how many are still able to hold a Genoa line <laughs> when there are 30 knots of winds around. No chance. Um, so still. this is definitely something we have to work on again. Um, yeah. Here we got a question from Sebastian. How many hours did it take to prepare the boat for the hurricane? I think it was like stepwise, probably in total it was like six or seven hours, yeah. but uh, it went like, you know, first it was a storm, so we took down, the first thing we took down was the solar panels. Um, Can't lose them again. We cannot lose them. And then when it started to rise, we started to fix down more the, the dinghy. Um, we started to look more closely on the anchor with every news we got. We, we luckily had two days to kind of step, yeah. do it step by step. But we're going to make also a YouTube video about it in detail and to show exactly um, where we did what. Um, so yeah, and also to go on the second question, yeah, we're definitely going to make a uh, yeah, YouTube video about the crossing. Uh, now that you're finally out sailing again, we definitely want to share that with you. And it was an amazing sail. Yes. Um, as I said, the first two days were, yeah, like if you could have chosen your weather conditions you could not have chosen them better it was just amazing we had the exact 120 110 degrees of wind we needed for the Jenaka. we had almost no waves so it was never slapping like literally i turned around every 20 minutes to see if the sail was still there because it was just so silent stable. and and stable and uh it was great uh still got a little bit seasick which was annoying i uh, have yes. to work on that better we have to go sailing more often. It never happened at the beginning. It's really strange. Um, but yeah, if we have now like uh, times and weeks that we are just you know standing around and then go for this long sail, it's, it's yeah, a bit shaky. A bit shaky and have to work on that again. <laughs> but yeah, that is quite quite of it. But yeah, now we are here in Curacao. Um, it is incredibly hot it's yes. just uh i don't know i don't know if it's yeah the, the temperature like uh, the whole weather is totally different there is probably no rain here because very little it's like a really dry land it's so hot i think right now we have 35 degrees in here we actually chose to stay inside because outside it's still hotter the sun is it's like 2 p.m now like half half uh, half past 1 p.m here so it's like the worst Worst time yeah. of the day, um, but I guess some of you will have to want to watch the soccer game <laughs> later, so we yeah. put it a little bit in front. Um, but yeah, do you still have any questions about 
the current situation we're in now with squalls or hurricanes. Hopefully no more hurricanes now. Yeah. Now I think we're, we're pretty safe here and we will stay here until October, mm -hmm. probably. So we will fly home for a few weeks back to Italy because we have not been home for one and a half years, probably with COVID and everything. So going back to family and friends. Nice. And then when we came back, Stoke, when we come back, we might sail we will have to see a lot of lot of decisions still to be taken um but yeah i think this is in general what we wanted to talk about today uh if there are no other yeah, major questions wrap it up um i think it was still great to have you all here thanks for for joining uh, it's always a pleasure to have you and talk to you. It's so great to get to know a lot of you also on uh, chat or the Patreon or... Yes, on Discord. Yeah, in Discord we have... We have a Patreon-only Discord now where we got a few of our closest friends and patrons in there and it's amazing. We share a lot of details there about our financials, um, our plans, where we're going, if we get hurt or not. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff that, yeah we don't share that yeah, publicly. Yeah, but we, we also want to hear your aspects. It's yeah. so great to, you know, see the boats you are sailing. Or Amazing. If you're looking for one, if you're just starting your sailing journey. Uh, so this is a lot of, you know, things we're sharing and we're hoping also to, you know, make a community where you can share also between yourselves. Uh, this is kind of why, why we love to be here with all of you. If we're going to watch the match, no. Yes, we are, and we are obviously rooting for... Italy will win! <laughs> for sure! <coughs> Sailing Sante, Trinidad and Tobago are opening our borders. Oh, that is, yeah, so that's that, good. That would have been an option too, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, yeah, was a little bit late for us, 17th, but I hope you can make it there. Maybe when we go back, we, like... From Curaçao, going back to the Caribbean can be quite tricky, so we don't know yet uh, in, in which direction we are going now from here. Might go east, if we're go yeah. back to Grenada and uh, St. Vincent, check that one out, and then go north to the Bahamas, for example, or Mexico, Cuba, Jamaica, and then Bahamas. And There's then still a lot to see, we did not move so much this yes. season. There was so yeah. much boat work we prepared we did a lot awesome installations and fortuna is now more ready than ever and then yeah ready for a lot of new destinations <laughs> yeah Woo. yeah thanks so much thanks because it's amazing <laughs> to have you here guys it was an amazing time hello ada <laughs> Yeah, no, thank. It, it was just literally a slab. It's almost gone now, yeah. um, so it was not all too much hurt. It was more the shock. Um, so it, it was a good lesson, you know. I, I said, as long as you hear the stories from the others, it's yeah. It's like with things your mother tries to teach you. <laughs> as long as you don't put your hand on the fire, you don't know it's really hot, um, or you don't believe it. So this time it was for us the squalls. Um, we learned to, yeah, as Michael said before, the, if you have a device which you can use to track, that's very, very helpful. And you learn to understand them. As we said, we learned that if we see they are moving 60 uh, knots um, on the radar, we know it's probably half of that. On, because obviously the radar is tracking the cloud, so the cloud is moving on the atmosphere or like high up. And so the wind down there is obviously moving a little bit slower. So we kind of go with like half the, the nuts. Uh, we, we expect at least half the nuts that we see, at least. And always trying to avoid to get in there too much. I think we also yeah. learned that. Just get, you have enough, if you want a little bit of speed, you have enough wind also in the outer skirts of, uh, of uh, her, uh, yeah, a hurricane spot. Kind yeah. of getting mixed up now with <laughs> all these weather formations. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It was awesome guys, thanks so much for having you all here. 
And next Enjoy week we will, match. yeah. Go next week we'll tell finally you a video again. I know yes. it's having quite some time. It was a little bit mixed up now. <laughs> Bye. Have a nice day. Cheers.